Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Today, the fate of millions of American women's reproductive health is once again in the hands of a far-right judge. This morning, federal judge Matthew Kaczmarek of the Northern District of Texas provided over a hearing in the small city of Amarillo. A coalition of anti-abortion groups brought this case seeking to overturn the Food and Drug Administration's approval of a medication commonly used in abortions. This drug has been on the market for more than 20 years. It has been proven to be safe and effective. In fact, millions of women take it every year. It is taken along with a second medication to end pregnancy in the first trimester, which is the method used by more than half of all women who have abortions in this country. Of course, this comes in the wake of the anti-abortion movement's success in overturning the right to an abortion enshrined for decades in Roe versus Wade. So abortion is now illegal under a near complete ban in 13 states, seriously limited in five more. And medication abortion is even more important in those areas with restrictions or limited resources because it is easier to access. But now it is possible that this one judge could pull this drug off the shelves, not just in those states where they've banned abortion, across the country, everywhere. With the stroke of his pen, he could conceivably cut off access to every woman and pregnant person in a nation of 300 million people. Now, you may be wondering, how is that possibly the case? And also, why is all this happening in Amarillo, Texas, of all places? And those are good questions. <laughs> Because the first thing you have to understand is that the judge in question here is a product of one of Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump's most successful projects during Trump's four years in office. Together, they ran through more than 200 new judges on the federal bench, many of whom are just obviously and avowedly right wing. Judge Kaczmarek is no exception. At 45 years old, Kaczmarek already has a long history of right wing conservative and anti-abortion beliefs. He led the college Republicans, the very conservative Abilene Christian University, where he wrote in the school newspaper, the Democratic Party's ability to condone the federally sanctioned eradication of innocent human life is indicative of the moral ambivalence undergirding this party. That's the guy that heard the arguments today. During law school, University of Texas, Kaczmarek focused his attention on the legal foundations for abortion rights and attended meetings of the Conservative Federalist Society. In 2014, he went to work for a conservative legal group called the First Liberty Institute, defending clients like the Christian owners of a bakery who refused to bake a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. The following year, he became a trustee on the board of an anti-abortion organization that offers housing and adoption services to women facing unexpected pregnancies. Judge Kaczmarek's sister told the Washington Post his beliefs are strongly held, and there's no reason to doubt that. Quote, he's very passionate about the fact that you can't preach pro-life and do nothing. Again, that's his sister who shares his views. Then President Donald Trump first nominated Kaczmarek to the federal bench in September of 2017. Democrats, understandably, staunchly opposed his confirmation and managed to hold it off for nearly two years. They argued that he was unfit for the role based on his anti-LGBTQ and anti-abortion beliefs. Not only are his views on non-discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity concerning, I am also very alarmed by his rec record as a fervent crusader against women's reproductive rights and for the far-right position that someone else's ideology is more important than a woman's ability to make her own personal medical decisions. If his arguments had won the day in court, a woman trying to get contraceptive care could face barriers thrown up at her by her employer or even by her pharmacy, all because someone else thinks that their beliefs matter more than a woman's own personal decisions about her own health care. Senator Patty Murray, who you saw there, and other opponents of Kaczmarek's nomination, also pointed to his writings in which he has described being transgender as a, quote, mental disorder, called homosexuality, quote, disordered, and said that sexual revolutionaries had made the unborn child and marriage secondary to erotic desires of liberated adults. So just take a second. There's no, like, pretending here, right? We're well past umpire balls and strikes. We know exactly who this guy is and what he believes. Everyone does. Across both sides, right? That's why they pushed to get him on the bench. And Donald Trump persisted. He renominated Kaczmarek two more times. And Senate Republicans, again, led by Mitch McConnell, the whole Republican Party, this is not the MAGA thing, finally succeeded in confirming him in June of 2019. Okay. 
So he's a federal district judge, and he takes up his lifetime post in Amarillo. It's up in the Texas panhandle. And there's hundreds of federal district judges. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't seem like the biggest deal in the world, except, except, except. That, so that northern district, he is the only federal district judge there in Amarillo. Okay? And that brings us to why this case today is in Amarillo at all. It turns out that if you are a party in a lawsuit who wants a hard right-wing outcome, particularly on these kinds of issues, all you got to do is find some plausible reason to bring it to Judge Kaczmarek in the Northern District of Texas. Find some way to file it in Amarillo. In fact, the Republican Attorney General of Texas, Ken Paxton, has done this several times. Ken Paxton's office is right there. It's in downtown Austin so close to the Austin federal courthouse that he could stroll over there in less than 20 minutes to file motions. But when Ken Paxton really needs the right outcome, he doesn't go there. Instead, he goes all the way up to Amarillo, a nearly eight hour drive northwest of Austin to file his suit specifically in Judge Kaczmarek's district where he knows Judge Kaczmarek will hear it. It's essentially a legal loophole. Conservatives have basically hacked the judicial system to create this tiny MAGA jurisdiction with a judge who they know will rule on what they, they file and will favorably re be relied upon to do what they want. And so far, this loophole is working out quite well for them. According to the Washington Post, Judge Kaczmarek has delivered several wins for the right, including one that struck down new Biden administration protections for transgender people, another that forced thousands of asylum seekers to return to Mexico while they awaited processing. That one was particularly rich. I mean, that was him declaring from Amarillo, Texas, federal immigration policy for the whole nation, the whole border. That asylum ruling, by the way, was overturned by the Supreme Court eventually. Late last year, Judge Kaczmarek also sided with the Christian father who did not want his daughters to access birth control without his permission, challenging a federal program that provides low cost or free contraception, including to teens without parental consent. That's the guy who's ruling on this today. That's the guy in whose hands the fate of medication abortion in this country currently rests. So I think there's a few lessons here. One is that there is still a lot of work to be done to undo, undo all the damage that Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, and the entire Republican Party pulled off over the course of four years. It's also clear, criminalizing all abortion, going after contraception everywhere for every woman and every pregnant person is going to remain a major priority for the conservative movement and the Republican Party. And the thing this situation shows us is how they must be held accountable politically. Because Judge Kaczmarek holds his seat for life. He doesn't have to care about politics. That's the whole point of getting him in there. That's why McConnell and Trump expended the political capital to put him there. Republican politicians, however, should have to own every single decision that comes from him. I can guarantee you Donald Trump has enough political savvy and instincts to want nothing to do with this case. But the outcome, like the reversal of role itself and the sustained assault on reproductive freedoms nationwide, is on him, Trump, and the Republican Party all the way, no question.